Ciao friends, welcome to another video from SQL BI. In a previous video, we talked about the scatterplot, which can be a really useful chart type for looking at the distribution of your data, like identifying outliers. We talked about all the different types of scatter plots, including the volcano plot. But we also mentioned the swarm or jitter plot. In that video and article, I mentioned that this isn't so possible to make with the core visuals of Power BI, but the thing is, I lied. It is possible, it's just not so obvious. In this video, we're going to explain how you can make a simple jitter chart to look at the distribution of your data along one axis. For example, when you want to compare a data point relative to the rest. Let's look at an example so we can understand what we're going to make today. This is the chart that we're going to create today. As you can see, it has a single measure on the x-axis like sales and a random number on the y-axis, which is our jitter to prevent the data points from consistently overlapping. That's why this is called a jitter plot. This kind of chart allows us to really quickly at a glance be able to see these data points and how they're distributed. So if each data point represents a customer, we can see that the majority of customers have very low sales with the exception of some outliers that have quite high sales. But what's particularly interesting for us and what we're going to do today is we want to highlight a specific data point of interest so we can see where it sits relative to all the rest. Now, we could do this with customer sales or product sales or a number of different use cases. There's a lot of applications, but we're going to do something a little bit more fun, at least for me. We're going to look at the statistics of creatures from Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to compare these creatures to one another, specifically looking at their health, so that when we select a creature, we can see whether it has higher or lower health than many other creatures. We want to create a report that looks something like this, where we select a creature like an Aboleth or an Acolyte, and we can see that it has, in this case, much lower health than all the other creatures. Or if we were to select a red dragon, that it has, of course, much higher health than the other creatures. So let's start by taking a look at our Dungeons and Dragons dataset. When we look at this data set, we can see that it's very simple. We have a single table, which we can see here, just the creatures table. We have the name of the creatures as well as some attributes and statistics, for example, their health. We're going to start by creating a measure, which will just have the average creature HP or hit points. So the average HP of the creatures we're going to start to create our jitter plot. So we're just going to select a scatter plot on the canvas and then add the average creature HP. And we want to view this by creature. So we can already see in this dot plot that, for example, the Tarask has the highest hit points and that there are some clusters of data points as well. But we can not see how many creatures are in this cluster. They're all overlapping. If we want to have these data points not overlap, we need to add that jitter. We're going to add the jitter by creating a new measure. We'll call it jitter, and we'll use the rand function to compute a uh, random value between zero and one. Okay. When we add this to the y-axis, we can immediately see that the data points are now less likely to overlap. However, there's a problem. When we look at this uh, chart, we can see that it would be very confusing for users for a number of reasons. A user might look at this and wonder why this data point is higher than that one, because it looks like a normal scatter plot. So we have to make sure that we avoid this confusing situation. So in the next step, we want to take some measures to be able to ensure that we are not going to show confusing information in our visual to a user. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn off the y-axis, turn off the values, turn off the y-axis title, just because it's not presenting any useful information. However, when a user hovers, we can see that we still have the jitter in the tooltip. So for now, we want to turn off tooltips and we're going to add a custom tooltip later at the end. So what we also want to do is we want to disable this responsive property in advanced options of the general formatting settings so that we have complete control over the formatting. This is important for later. And then we're going to modify our jitter. 
So we are going to have the jitter distribute around zero by subtracting 0 0.5 from that random distribution and then multiplying it by 0 0.9. We're then going to shrink down our chart and we can see that this distribution is a lot more compact, making it so that the focus is on that x-axis distribution and not what's happening on the y, which is just our jitter. So what we're going to do next is we will just make sure that the markers are um, a little smaller. So we'll reduce it to minus 20. And we'll also add a label to the end right here so that we'll label that HP so it's even more clear. We'll do this by adding a y-axis constant line, and we'll call this constant HP. This will be an invisible line because we just want the data label, which will be underneath, and this is the name of our constant line. We change this to black, we can see that here HP is now appearing. So we want this to be at approximately 0 0.1. So it's in the middle. And then we're just going to adjust our x-axis so that it starts at, in this case, minus 50, so that it's visible. This is an optional step, but it's something that you can do just to help make it abundantly clear to users that the y-axis isn't something they should focus on, that they should only focus on the x-axis. The next step is to set up our model so that when we select a single creature, that it's not going to filter to that creature, but in our visual, it's just going to highlight that creature. Now, in order to do this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new table, which is just a dimension table that we'll call creature names, which as the name suggests, has just all of the distinct creature names. Now, this table is not going to have a physical relationship with our creatures table, but instead we are going to create a virtual relationship using treat as, so that all of the values of the creature names corresponds to the names in our original table. This means that when we are going to use the name from our creature names table, that we get our expected distribution. Now, this means that these values are not going to change. However, we do notice that the random number is changing. So even though the values on the x-axis are remaining the same, so to show the highest one here, the Tarask, is remaining at around 650, the values are changing along the y-axis. And the reason is because it's recomputing the random number each time it fires that query. This is not something that we want because it's going to be very confusing for users and it looks like there's filtering actually happening. But in reality, it's just recomputing this random number. So to avoid this, what we're going to do is we're going to move that random number to a calculated column. We could also move it to Power Query or further upstream, but just to keep it simple, we're going to have it as a calculated column. So we'll use add columns to create the jitter and we're going to simply move that calculation into here, where we have rand minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.9. And just to keep it organized, All right? And then we'll change our jitter to also take from this table so that we'll have the maximum max of the jitter. And we're using the same virtual relationship between these two columns, okay? So this is done, so now when we select these values, so it's not moving along the y-axis anymore, uh, and the reason is because, of course, it's computed as a calculated column, so it's only going to recompute when we make a change to our model and it reprocesses that column. But when we are interacting with the report, it's not going to change, which is exactly the behavior we want. So now we need to set up the highlighting. In order to do this, we're going to make use of calculation groups, and we're going to manipulate that virtual relationship. So we're going to go into our model view, and we're going to, in the model tab, create a new calculation group. 
So we'll call this calculation group here. We're going to just double click on the calculation group to rename it. We'll call it highlighted creature. And we're going to have two calculation items. We're going to have one called selected creature and another uh, calculation item for all creatures. So all creatures is just going to be the selected measure. So very simple. Whereas the selected creature, we are going to actually change up this relationship so that we're applying the filter from the name column in the creatures table, which we're using in the slicer, to the name column in our dimension table. So we're selectively applying that filter. So we're using this same virtual relationship approach, but we're doing it in the other direction. All right, so we've now created this calculation group and it will become clear the moment we apply it what it's doing. When we take our calculation group column, so we will apply it to the legend and we'll just call it highlight. And we can see that the selected creature is highlighted here. So we're going to change the formatting so that it's a little bit more obvious. So the selected creature we will make red and all creatures will make gray. So this is much clearer. And then we'll change the series so that all creatures are diamonds and the selected creature is a circle. Now, fortunately, we can't change the size to make it selectively larger, but that is just how it is. Make them a little bit bigger. Okay. So that when we're selecting one or more creatures, uh, if we're selecting a creature, then we can see that it's being highlighted. If we select multiple creatures, we'll notice that it's not working the way that we expect. And the reason is because we need to use keep filters. So <coughs> we need to add keep filters in order to respect the original filter context. And if we do that, then now it's going to highlight multiple creatures that we select. To summarize, what we've done is we've created a jitter plot which shows us the distribution of a single measure for a specific category and we've set it up so that when we select one value in that category, we can compare how it sits relative to the rest of the distribution. This is already very helpful, as we can see, when we're selecting one of these values and we can see where it is in the jitter plot. However, it's quite difficult to be able to look in this area and understand exactly how many creatures are there because it's still very clustered together. If you remember from the original chart, we had a distribution plot which allowed us to be able to see how many creatures are in a given area and to locate the specific creature that we've selected. So we are going to create this exact chart in our report. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to just make some small changes, disabling the title and the legend of our jitter plot, moving it a bit down. And then we're going to create a line chart. We're going to adjust the line chart so that it's positioned above our scatter chart, making it about the same. And then we are going to add the number of creatures, the number of creatures along the y-axis. And this is just the count rows of all of the creature names from the creature names table. We add this to the y-axis. And then along the x-axis, we want to add the creature hit points. So we could do this from here, changing this to a summarize creatures, and then having the creature names, whoops, the, the names of the creature and the HP. So we could do this and then have the HP along the x-axis like this. But the problem is that it's really difficult to be able to tell exactly how many creatures there are in a given area. It's not the smoothest distribution, so it's a bit difficult to be able to draw conclusions. 
what we could instead do is bin these values, these HP values, to make it a bit of a smoother distribution so it's easier to read. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to change this back to the original value so it was distinct, creature name, and then we are going to have the HP bins where we are just going to, with the calculate to do the context transition, have a floor for the um, max of the creatures HP. And we're going to group them in bins of 20 and add the comma here. So we'll remove this and add now the bins. And we can see that this is a much cleaner distribution compared to what we had before. So what we're going to now do is make some formatting changes, removing the values from the y-axis. And we're going to change the line so that it matches the color of the creatures. Uh, we're going to just align the axes here. And we're also going to shade the area beneath the lines. Shade the area and set the transparency to 30% or actually 80%. Uh, all right, so we have our distribution. And then we just have to add our constant line. So we're going to add an x-axis constant line. And this is going to just be the value for the specific creature that we're selecting. So selected creature HP. It's just the selected value of the creature's HP. Okay, because we're using from the creatures table the name here, so it should give us then the HP for the adult black dragon. So we'll match the color and we'll select the selected creatures hit points and we get that line. We can format the line a little bit, make it solid and then shrink this down, doing the same changes that we made before, turning off responsive, and turning off the x-axis title and values, and formatting the y-axis title. All right, there we go. So now when we select a creature, then it's going to show us not only where it sits along the distribution of hit points for all the creatures, but it will also tell us how many creatures is in that area. So this is definitely not the most optimal solution, but it does give us some supplemental idea of exactly how many data points fall in the area of that specific um, jitter plot. So this can be a very useful addition using the two of these together, or you can use only one of them together with the selection. To summarize, what we've done is we've created a jitter plot, and we've had it so that it selectively highlights a data point to see where it sits on the distribution. And we also added this joint plot to show the distribution above it so that we can see how many data points fall in that area. These charts can be very useful when you're trying to understand a big picture in just a glance, and trying to get an idea of how the data points are distributed to relative to one another. Enjoy making reports. You have to roll for initiative to be in the video. That's an eight. That's an eight. Sorry, I don't think that's high enough. 